you'll get an email afterwards with the recording and then the transcripts as well. Fantastic. Okay, welcome to the Blue Sky Statistics Workshop. My name is Bob Minchin. Here's an email uh, you can reach me at. Uh, I'm a member of the Research Computing Support Team and we provide up to 15 hours of help with all kinds of research questions. So, uh, and, and it's a free assistance, so please take advantage of it. You can reach us at this number or that webpage. So we're gonna be talking about uh, Blue Sky Statistics, which is a graphical user interface or GUI for the R language. So let's go ahead and start that up. Uh, there actually, there's, there's the version seven that's still available. And it does, there are just a couple of things that it still does that version 10 doesn't do, uh, but um, it, it's getting to be a very small number. Uh, and here is blue, what the icon for Blue Sky Statistics 10. So between 7.5 and 10, they, they jumped up just like Windows did to indicate that there was a huge change and it's a completely new uh, architecture, which enabled them to come out with a Mac version. So we're only gonna be using version 10, 10.2. All right, let me shrink that down. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom this. So you see at the bottom, if I click on that, I'm gonna raise that to 125%. So you can see uh, everything a little bit more clearly. And then I'll increase the size of the screen. Okay. So you can see that uh, it's got um, a main menu across the top here and uh, it starts actually with, with what we call the triple bar icon. Some people call that the hamburger uh, icon. And that's where you open data sets. Uh, and, and it can open lots of formats. Uh, SAS data sets, SPSS, uh, Excel, of course. Uh, there, are, there are about 25 different uh, file formats it'll open. And if you want to load a data set from an R package, you can uh, do that here. Uh, there's a data set, uh, data sets menu. These are the things that affect an entire data set. So if you're sorting, uh, it's, it's affecting the whole data set. Or if you're sampling, uh, then it's, you know, it's affecting the, the whole data set. Uh, if you're doing things that affect only variables, uh, individual variables, then those are located under the variables menu. So we've got things like computing dummy codes and uh, conditional computes and, and so forth. One of the more powerful features here is uh, what you can do with factor levels. So you can, um, my, my personal favorite here is lump into other, which, uh, which what it does is if you have a factor, let's say you have a diagnosis in a hospital and in a typical hospital, maybe there are uh, 20 diagnoses that there are a lot of people in the hospital for. And other than that, there's just one of a of 100 other things, just one each. Uh, and by choosing lump into other, all those 100 things will be dumped into a category just labeled other or labeled however, however you like. Uh, you can reorder uh, uh, factor levels by the count of them, so you're, so you're shifting the order of bars and bar charts or columns and tables and, and so forth. So there's a lot of flexibility there. The analysis menu is where you spend a lot of time. And this is the kinds of analyses that are relatively simple. So you're not having to build a complex model. The only exception to that is the means uh, menu where there are things like, uh, Nway ANOVA, where you can build a pretty complicated model there, um, but it's on this menu rather than down here under model fitting. So model fitting are all the models where you're generally having to specify a lot of things about the model. And we'll do some of those in, in a little bit. Uh, the distribution menu is pretty much mainly of interest if someone's teaching statistics, because it's got all these distributions and it'll give you 
uh, probabilities and graphs and so forth of the different distributions. Graphics, uh, it's got a lot of different types of, of graphs, pretty much most of the popular ones. DOE stands for Design of Experiments, where you can design uh, complex, all kinds of complex things, um, uh, de-optimal designs, you, you name it. Uh, it'll help you design them and then you can go collect your data. If you're doing quality control kinds of things, there are a whole bunch of standard uh, quality control charts there. Then there's model fitting and model tuning. So the difference here between model fitting is here, you are specifying what the model should be, and then you're looking to see how did it do. Whereas model tuning, it looks like not very much is going on here, uh, but it is going to, Blue Sky is going to go out using an R package called Carrot, and it's going to find the optimal model for you. So for example, this K-fold cross-validation. Oops, I don't have a data set. Oh, well, I'll have to talk about that later. So whether you're fitting a model or tuning a model, when you're done, you have a model. And then you can go on your model evaluation. Uh, you could uh, summarize various things about the model. You could get measures of, of fit and, and so forth. And then forecasting uh, covers quality control, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, time series uh, forecasting kinds of models. And agreement uh, compares uh, social science kinds of things like Chromebox Alpha or McDonald's Omega, how consistent did people respond to things? And under method, it's comparing multiple methods of measuring things uh, often used in uh, medical circumstances. And then the last uh, menu item here is the triple dot, which some people call the kebab menu. Uh, and here's where we've got settings for controlling how your output looks, themes for how your, your graphics look, uh, help files, uh, and then diagnostics, which you probably would never use unless you were having some weird uh, error message popping up. You can install our packages here if you wanted to use something new. And you could update the Blue Sky uh, Statistics R package, which probably you'll never need to do uh, unless uh, the tech support people told you that that would solve some problem you, you might come across. All right. so. That's the general layout of the whole thing. So let's open a data set. So I'm gonna click on open and I'm going to go to my C drive and go under program files and blue sky statistics. And you can see it's building the path up here. So if I'm going too fast, you'll be able to see where I'm going. And I have a choice, version 7.4 I'm running, or 10, I, I want to go to 10. And here's sample data sets and documents. And then we got data sets and demos. And we've got all kinds of demo data sets in here. And I want to go down to sample our data sets. OK, so now I want to open a couple of files. One's called penguins, and I'll say open. And then I'll say open again, and it remembers where I was, thank goodness. I don't have to go through all that path again. And now I want the uh, Titanic data set. So you can see that um, Blue Sky has the ability to have multiple data sets open. Here's the blank one we started with. There's Penguins, there's Titanic. And whichever one you click on, that's the one that's going to be used when you start using your menus. And over here, you can see I've got some output that's uh, appearing. And so far, it hasn't said much other than <clears throat> that it's, it, it's shown a little bit of R code here to tell you how it loaded that uh, packet or that uh, data set. Okay, so let me uh, mention here. So Blue Sky is free and open source software. You've seen it does some data management, visualization, statistics, machine learning, and, and uh, AI kinds of things. 
You control it with menus and dialog boxes as, as we'll do, but you could also control it through the R language if, if you wanted to. It keeps track of what it's doing uh, over in the output window. And so it's reproducible. You could, you could do a whole bunch of work and then open it up next week and continue working what you, what you were working on before. You could call up a model you'd done before and make just a slight change to the model and it would have remembered the whole model. It has publication quality tables and graphs, so a, uh, APA style and, and so forth. It will teach you our terminology. So we, you'll be learning what a factor is, what a facet is, what a model is when you use Blue Sky. And those are the same terms used uh, in R. So if you decide to learn R later, those will be familiar. If you want to see the R code that uh, it's using, it'll show you that. And the code generally it's using is uh, R code called uh, the tidyverse, which is one of the types of R code that people generally want to learn when they're starting with R. It's extensible through your own R code. So if, uh, if you see Blue Sky doesn't do something you want it to do, uh, I'll tell you very often what I've done is I've typed up a little bit of code and I draw a dialog box uh, that would control that code. And I email it off to the company and say, hey, how hard would it be to create this dialog box? And fairly often they come back and say, oh, it's done, it's online now, you, you can download it. So it, once you learn how to do that kind of thing, it's, it's a pretty easy process. Uh, and, a, and a nice feature is Blue Sky provides package management. So any of you that might have used R by its own, uh, you might have written an R program that worked fine, and then six months later, your boss comes in and says, I need that report and I need it right now. And you go to run the report and uh oh, now there are error messages where there were no error messages before. Why? Because an R package is, has been improved. Well, that improvement broke what your whole thing did. And so you have a choice. Are you gonna have to go and figure out how to fix your, your code? Or if you were in blue sky and something like that happened, all you would have to do is go go and, and download and install the older version of Blue Sky that you had when it worked. And it would be giving you a complete set of R and R packages hidden behind the scenes. So if it worked in 7.5 and now you've been in 10 and for some reason, maybe it doesn't work because an R package changed, all you have to do is download 7.5 and put it in there and, and run it. And if you're familiar with package management in R, it's, it's a very tricky business otherwise. There are several ways to do it and none of them are fun. So, there, so Blue Sky is not the only front end or graphical user interface for R. There are a bunch of them that are available uh, and I review them all at this website down here. Uh, and uh, you, you know, each one of them has something unique and useful to offer. Uh, and, and Blue Sky is not the number one uh, highest ranking package under all conditions. But if you go and see this, you'll see I have a bunch of graphs like this. And on average, Blue Sky uh, comes out on top because it's very powerful. It's also easy to use. It may not be the most powerful, but it's, but it's relatively powerful. So uh, anyway, you can find out a lot more information uh, on uh, that website. So under data management, we're not going to go into all these details, but there's a lot of data management under variable management. Look at there's like 43 different things that you can call up to apply uh, to your your variables. All kinds of missing value imputation and and so forth. Uh, there are uh, 29 different plots that that you can do. And uh, installing it is pretty much as simple as going to blueskystatistics.com, uh, downloading it. Uh, and installing it. Now, if you're on a Mac, it does require uh, a package called XQuartz, which is a version of X Windows, and uh, you can get that from xquartz.org. So, and the Blue Sky installation gives you Blue Sky and also gives you the R language and all the, all the 300 plus packages that it needs. It gives you a copy of Python because Python is used in the background. And uh, if you have your own R or Python uh, installations, it will not touch those. So you actually could end up with duplicates of both of those. Uh, so it wastes a little bit of disk space, but that's a good thing because 
it's locked down. When, when I first used Blue Sky, they had you first install R and then install Blue Sky. Well, that meant if you screwed up the R installation somehow, well, then Blue Sky just didn't work. So it, it's locking those two together to make sure that uh, everything works well. Okay, uh, let me pause there and check to see uh, any questions so far. Does it use uh, Python 2 or 3 in the background? I'm pretty sure it's Python 3. So the idea is at the moment, the editor only uh, supports R, but the goal is to support a Python and, and, R, and uh, SQL also, uh, which in adding Python to it should be very, very easy because uh, everything it does, it looks at what you click on in JavaScript. It converts what your clicks are in the dialogues Python looks at that and converts that into our code. Thanks. Sure. Other uh, questions? Okay, so user interface basics. Let's see, we've talked about how there is a main menu and when you click on something up here, then the submenus uh, change. Uh, you've seen the output um, uh, window. This spreadsheet is called the data grid and uh, the zoom control is there in the in the corner. And notice it also says split off in the corner. And if you're familiar with SPSS, uh, it, it works pretty much the same way, where if you want to, any graph you do or any analysis you do, you want it repeated for every level of your group. So for example, our penguin data set has four species of penguins. If I say split this, uh, everything I'm doing by penguin, uh, then every single thing that follows will be done four times, one for each each penguin, which is, I'm pretty sure, a unique feature to, well, uh, R and STAT might have that because that's a, a, a very complex user interface, but uh, neither Jasper nor Jamovi have uh, uh, anything like that. And then here's the little R editor, and you notice by default, the R editor is even hidden down here. You see that it's there, and if you toggle it, It'll pop up and down, but there are a lot of Blue Sky users that never use uh, the R editor. So the data grid itself has a little plus sign on the side. And if you click that, you'll get a, another empty data set. So empty data set number one is there. It would just pop up and say data set two. And if this, this little refresh uh, icon what that does is if you had made some changes using our programming code and you wanted those changes reflected in the view, then you could click that to, to update it. And we got variable names there. And there's a little icon here. The ABC icon represents character data. And down at the bottom of the data grid is a data tab and a variables tab. So let's take a look at that. So here I'm showing data. If I switch to variables, then it lists all the metadata here, the name of the variables, uh, what type of variable it is, or a class type measure and, and levels and so forth if they're, if they're factors. And you can right click on these things. And let's say species is a factor, but if species were, was read in from an Excel file, it would probably be a character variable. And we can just right click on it and say, make it a factor and it would become a factor. Okay, let's see. So let's enter some practice data. So I'm gonna go to data set one and I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna put in just one, two, three, and I'm hitting a uh, down arrow in between these. And then I'm going up and across with the arrows. And let's say male, male, female, female to make a little tiny data set. And let's throw in, I'm just going to make up some scores. OK, so now my most common mistake is when I've typed this in, if I don't leave that cell or hit enter, it's not going to know that I entered it. So now, now it knows. Okay, so let's save that data set. And I'm going to 
I'll just leave it right there so I don't have to go find those files again. I'm going to call it uh, <coughs> delete this demo file. <laughs> That's the name of it. So I'll remember later to go back and get rid of this. Oh, so I don't have permission to write there, of course, because that is <laughs> the the copy, the original copy uh, of of the your program, and so it doesn't want to mess with that. So do you want? It says, do you want it to go there? I'm going to say no. I'm going to click save. Uh, mm, all right, I'll say yes. I thought it was going to let me choose a place, but apparently it's not doing that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it is. Okay, sorry. So I want to go to desktop and save. And so, oh, I forgot to point out previously, well, let's go back to the slides. When you start, every, every uh, variable has an ABC next to it. And that means it's character data to start with. Until you start entering data, it doesn't know otherwise what to do with it. And so then after I saved it, it put a one, two, three indicating that this is a numeric variable. And this is ABC uh, showing that it's a character variable. And um, this is a one, two, three. So let's go to, over to variables. And you'll see that that is character. And so I'm going to right click. And I'm going to say, make that a factor. And then I could go and use that as, uh, say, a, a, a group variable in a t-test. And then after making that change, I would want to click save again. So, uh, so this data editor is nowhere near as powerful as Excel or any database. So you can't, like if I'm typing one, two, three, four, and I wanted to type on, keep on typing up to a hundred, that's trivial in Excel. Uh, this thing doesn't do that. Uh, so it's, it's really good for opening files from other that were entered other places. But if I were going to enter a lot of data, I would never enter it into this thing because Excel has so many other features. Any spreadsheet has way more features than this. So I would save them in either Excel format or comma separated value format. And then I would just click on the open up here and open it uh, like we did the, the uh, penguins and the Titanic data. Okay, so, all right, so we've talked about that. We've opened two data sets. Yeah, so let's take a look at the other data sets. So here's penguins. If we look at the variables, we see we got species as a factor, what island they're from is a, is a factor variable. <clears throat> and then we got some numerics with bill length, bill depth, flipper length, body mass. Um, and it's some of these are numeric and some are integer. That really makes no difference at all. <clears throat> numeric could have decimals in there, and uh, integers don't have decimals. But other than that, it doesn't. You don't. You don't have to pay attention to that when you're doing any analysis. Okay. And if we move over to Titanic, again, it always defaults to data view. If we switch to variable view, we'll see how many people are. You know, who survived the Titanic. Uh, sinking of the Titanic, uh, what would the passenger class, uh, sex, age, number of siblings, number of, of parents and children that went with them, and so on. Okay, so data grid pros and cons. Uh, I've covered most of these. One of the um, one of the things I haven't mentioned is you can't paste into it, which I find really irritating. So if you so if you had an Excel data set. You couldn't copy it and paste it in there. You would ins instead have to save it to an Excel file or a comma separated value file, and then uh, use the open method to, to pull it in. And also, data grids metadata changes are not saved for reproducibility. So over here in the output window, if I had gone under variables, let's see, where was I? I was here and, oh, I didn't change the variable names here. Let's go under variables and say, this variable I want to call uh, ID. And then this one, 
um, let's call that sex. And then this is some test score. And so now when you go back, the, the names have been changed. I would like to click on these and change them right there, but that, that kind of thing doesn't work here. Okay. Um, so the bottom line is use other tools if you're doing a lot of work in it and then read them in. Okay, so questions about uh, data grid or opening files? Okay. So running analyses and graphs, let's, let's go do a little bit of analysis. So I'm going to get frequency tables. So let's go to the um, analysis menu. The, the menus are in alphabetical order, except for these last two, which probably are gonna be moved to uh, an add-on status later. Uh, so let's click on analysis. And I want a summary and I'm gonna get frequencies. By the way, anything marked legacy means uh, probably it's almost identical to this, but there was um, enough of a change just to notify you there's been a slight change to this dialogue. So we'll use the, the newer one. Oh, so, uh, so I was wanting to use uh, the uh, Titanic data set, but I forgot to click on it. So I look at this and go, wait a minute, where are my variables? Well, it's a good example how let's close this. And I have to choose the variable, the data set I want to analyze. So now that I've chosen this, I can go to summary and ask for frequencies. And let's look at survival and uh, passenger class. You can select them one at a time, or you can uh, drag them over, whoops, drag them over if you want, or you can click and shift click and get a whole set of them and move, move the set over. All right, so now I have choices. I can click run and it'll do it. I can say, click this and it'll show me the R code. I can ask for help or I can just close this dialogue. So I'm gonna go ahead and click run. And, oh, I forgot to change this back. All right, so let me switch to the uh, triple dot menu. I'm gonna change my settings back to the defaults for output. The th um, the output, output tables. Rather, so I had APA style turned on. I'm gonna turn it back to the default. I'm gonna click the save icon here. So now I wanna redo this, this work. And how I bring it back is I click this icon that's, that's the dialog box re recall button. So I click it, it comes back and I click run and it just repeats the analysis. <clears throat> and so you can see by default, it uses this nice shading and the shading is better when you've got very wide tables because it's easy for your eye to go across the table. And I'm, I'm going to, just to generate more output, I'm gonna recall this again, just run it again. And the reason I'm doing that is I wanna show you with, with this APA style table. So this is a standard journal style table. Look at the column headings. And as I scroll down, they disappear. But by default, if I scroll down, they, they follow it along. So if this were a big long table, which it's not, and I wanted to study this row as I scroll down, it, uh, it locks that in place until I pass that table, then it locks the next one in place. So very handy. Okay, so let's look at let's look at the output. <laughs> so we have um, let's see. It starts with just a summary uh, that it's doing two variables, two they call nominals or or factors, and uh, how many observations, and then it gives uh, a summary where it's doing nothing but counts, but it can pack a lot of variables in because it's only doing counts. 
And then it comes up and says, all right, now we're doing frequencies, percents, cumulative percent, valid percent. Valid percent is excluding missing values if there were any, uh, which we don't have here. Uh, and then uh, valid cumulative percents. <clears throat> So much a much more standard statistical table than you would get from our table routine. Now I can still bring this up. And if I want to say, use the R table function and say, I want a table on Titanic dollar sign uh, P class, passenger class. I can do that. And that's what a standard R frequency table looks like. So generally, blue sky does way nicer output than R would do by default. And plus, if I copy this into Word, I'm not going to get a real table. Whereas if I come up here and I right click on it and say copy, and I go to Word and paste it in, I've got a bunch of different styles I can paste with. And here I've, I've gone, it's, it's a true word processing table. And uh, after I pasted it in, I chose a different style from, from Word. So I can change fonts, I can eliminate columns and do you know, anything you could do with a real uh, table. Okay, so let me shrink that back down. So now we've seen uh, that here we got uh, most people, 60% of the people did not survive, 40% did survive. That's what zero and one mean. So let's do a different, a uh, little more analysis there. And I'm going to go and do a cross tab. And I want uh, sex to be my row variable and survival to be the column variable. And if I scroll down here, I can bring up options. And I would like a chi-square test and row percentages. And here is a button to where I could make the table very, very long. So regardless of how many rows and columns it might have, it all turns into just, um, well, we'll do, we'll do one and see. So let's run that. And so we see here are the females, their, their counts, and 75% of them survived. And here are the males and their counts. We see that uh, almost 80% of them died. So that's a pretty radical difference there. And that's the kind of thing a chi-square tests. <clears throat> and here the p-value is 8.25 times 10 to the minus 68th power. That is a whoppingly tiny, tiny number. Uh, and uh, so if we were looking at the 0.05 level of significance, we could reject the null hypothesis that uh, sex and survival are independent. All right, so I can call this back and Let's say I want a long table, and then let's get rid of the chi-square and say run. And here it puts the counts and the percents vertically and puts the, uh, uh, the sex and survival uh, as columns. So this is something if you had, you know, say dozens of combinations, then this table stays the same width, but gets really long. Whereas this style of table gets longer and, or wider and longer. Make sense? Okay, so let's get a plot of, uh, of that kind of combination. So we're gonna go under graphics, get a bar chart. And let's say I'm interested in survival as my X variable. And let's use sex as a factor to fill the variables by. And I have a choice to flip the axis. Do I want the bars to be stacked or side by side or filled with percent? I'll just run it. So here we see of those that survived, most are female, those that died, most are male, but we don't have percents. So if we wanted to simplify that, we could call this back up 
and check the fill percents uh, button. And now you see that everything adds up to 100%. And now it's, it's easier to, it's, a, it's the same pattern. It's just now we're looking at, at proportions or percents uh, to make the comparison a little bit easier. Okay, so, so, so where's the R code for this thing? It's hidden right behind here. So this is the icon that says, show me the R code. And if I click it, there's the code. And I'm going to select it. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna right click it. And I'm gonna choose copy. Then I'm gonna bring up uh, our studio. I'm going to paste in that code and tell it to run. Why isn't it running? Control enter. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure why they didn't run. Um, but see, so, so whenever possible, the code, well, pretty much all the code in Blue Sky will run in R if you install the Blue Sky package into our studio. So I don't have the latest one, so I can't just cut and paste anything in here, but I just happen to know that the data sets, almost all these commands are done in tidyverse R code. The variables are done that way. The graphics are done that way. And I know because I wrote all that code and did those dialog boxes and sub submitted them to the Blue Sky people and they just put them in. <clears throat> So uh, you've got a lot of compatibility if you want it. If you want to learn how R works, uh, it would be very easy to say, let's, uh, let's bring up this window over here and make the window a little bit bigger. And I'm going to paste the code in here. And I could do all kinds of things like, um, what can I do here? Let's say I want to just change this to demo bar chart. And then I can come up to the top, click run. Oh, it's only doing that one. I can click here and click run. And so now the title says demo. So I, I could change anything I like here and it, it would run. <clears throat> so what Blue Sky has saved me from having to type is all of that code. Now, when I was at the peak of my skills with, with ggplot graphics code, I probably could not have typed this error-free the first try. I would have screwed something up. Forget one comma and boom, it's doomed. <laughs> uh, so if you're wanting to learn this kind of code, it's a great way to do it. Um, so anyway, it's, it's there if, if, that, if that's what you wanted to do. Did you already have Titanic preloaded in our studio or did it? Excellent question. <laughs> yes. There, so up here at the top, way at the top, the very first thing we did was this load command. So I could have said export right here, export the output. And then the choices are, Blue Sky Markdown, which is abbreviated BMD. This is Blue Sky's native format. Or I could put in R Markdown. <clears throat> the difference between these two is R Markdown is just R code with Markdown documentation in it, like uh, headlines of what analysis was done. Whereas Blue Sky Markdown is that plus the dialog boxes written in an XML format. Or you can write out HTML and then you'd have a report to put on your web page. So if I had wanted to do the whole thing from the beginning, I would have had to have done R Markdown and go paste that in as R Markdown. And then it, then it all would run. Thanks.
yeah, that was a that was a great question. I'm glad you asked that. <clears throat> um, okay, so another thing you can do in any of these graphics. Let's oh, so you notice I ran this from my own code. So there's no dialog box to recall. And sometimes this confuses me. I, I, I came up here looking for it. And for a second, I went, wait a minute, here's the graph. Where's the dialog? Well, I already forgot that I ran this particular one from code. So here's the one I ran. Let's hide that code. So I want to run this graph again. But say I'm, I'm sending this to a journal that uh, if I do it in color, they charge me money. At least that's the way some journals used to be. I don't know if they're still that way. So I'm going to bring back the dialog. And I'm going to remove, well, I'll leave sex in there. I'm going to go to this facets thing, and I'm going to say I want uh, sex to be, uh, to form rows in this table. So let's go ahead and run that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's not uh, that's not what I had in mind. Let's take that out of there. Am I going to get the same thing in that? I am going to get the same thing. What what am I doing? Why did it not come out as I expected? Why is count? Okay, I've got survived as X. So let's remove that and run that. Oh, I've got it set to do uh, percents. That's my problem. <clears throat> I wanted uh, just counts. There we go. And now in the rows, let's have sex. Here we go. That's where I was headed. So now the color is gone, but we see the female is here. Uh, and so this whole graph in the top is for the females and uh, way more uh, survived and the males way more uh, died. And you can, you can add, uh, you could do a split down the center here and uh, uh, add in passenger class. And, and you, know, you, can, you can get these, whoops, you can get these things to be quite complex. Let's do passenger Uh, facet columns, passenger class. And so now we can see the people in first class, gosh, what do you know? There's a really, really good survival rate. If you're uh, a female in first class, boy, just about all of them made it. And if you're a male in third class, bye-bye. Uh, so... Okay, so anyway, you can do very, very complex graphs just with a few clicks. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just adding on uh, more and more code with, so here are the fast, there's the facet uh, information that uh, was required to do that. Not, not hard, but, uh, you know, it, uh, it's nice that you didn't have to remember how to do that. Okay. Um, Let's see, we talked about getting help. If you, if you click the question mark, you'll get, you'll get uh, a dialogue telling you about, <clears throat> about the dialogue you're using. And if you click the little R icon, it'll bring up uh, R's own help file about that particular R function, which may or may not be useful. It depends on how much you're wanting to actually learn about the R language itself. And the, uh, let's go to triple dot help and getting started. So there are all kinds of uh, videos, getting started with Blue Sky 10, overview of the data grid, uh, working with empty data sets and so forth. So a lot of the things that we've covered are, are available in um, online videos here out on YouTube. Let's see, so we saw the cross tab output. So we're ready to move on to controlling settings. So any questions on the things we've covered so far?
Um, how, how did you convert it to black and white again? Oh, uh, yeah, let's back up. <clears throat> so when I was uh, here, let's bring back the dialogue. Whoops. Here we go, dialogue. And it was, I specified a, a fill factor. And so it, that's, that's what it used to uh, fill in the bars. And I, and I could still use that if I were doing side by side and run it. And here, um, you know, the color is really needed because they're, you know, they're, you don't, with, without this legend, you wouldn't know which is which. Uh, whereas up here, you've got the legend written off to the side. So you, I, I like this much better because, or this one is more closer, because it lets you focus on one thing and make your comparison from here. You know, you can look across the axis here and here. Whereas when, especially when they're stacked, if you were looking like right here and you wanted to know how many females survived? Oops, this is, that's percent. Let's go back to counts. Here we are with counts. So how many females survived? You're looking here at like 420, but wait a minute, that's everybody. So now you say, well, 420 females, 420 of everybody, we got to subtract out 180 female, 180 males to get this amount. Which if, if So if your point is to talk about the totals, this is the better graph. But if your point is to be able to uh, talk about then how many females and how many males, I'm sorry, females survive versus didn't survive, or males survive versus didn't survive, then this is the better plot. And we, in fact, we've got a, an entire workshop on data visualization and how to make those kinds of decisions uh, that um, you can watch online. With workshop.utk.edu. Thank you. Other, yeah, sure. Other questions? Okay. So, um, so let's talk about controlling settings. Let's go to triple dot settings. And we'll start with output. So by default, the numbers uh, that are very small will be shown in scientific notation. Some people aren't used to scientific notation. Like, so for example, this is 1.23 e to the minus five, which means times 10 to the minus fifth. So you take this decimal and move it one, two, three, four, five to the left. If you're not used to that, uh, kind of style, you could instead say when p-values are, are smaller than the number of digits you've allocated, just display less than 0 0.001. So I'm gonna leave that on there. Uh, at the bottom of the tables, it, it had asterisks, let's go back to that, where we did our uh, chi-square. Oh, this one does. This one's not doing it. That's interesting. Uh, you'll see a, a, most of the tables when they display uh, a p-value, they'll put stars next to it and a note at the bottom saying significant at the point zero zero one level or or whatever. I think that's actually uh, a slight bug there that that's missing. You can control the number of, of digits there. Um, and if you always want to see the R code, all you have to do is check that box and it will always display it. So uh, we talked about the default table theme, how uh, the shading makes the wide rows very easy to read. And as, especially very long tables, as you scroll down, it's great to see the, 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 the titles frozen, uh, easier to, to track. Oh, and um, let's see, where was that? That's triple dot settings. 
not output, that's output tables. And I'm using the default table theme. I'm gonna to switch to American Psychological Association journal style. So you could choose among a bunch of them. I'll just choose that. So from now on, after I click the save, it'll, it'll do that. Oops, I didn't want it to go away. Let me bring, bring that back. Uh, <clears throat> if I want LaTeX output, which I use a lot, and normally I, I want the column spacing on LaTeX to be slightly narrower than that, then if I click Save, and I say, do this cross tab again, <clears throat> Here is the LaTeX output in perfect APA style. I copy and paste that into a LaTeX document and say compile and boom, out it comes looking beautiful. And it stays that way until you bring that back. Oops, sorry, settings. And you turn off LaTeX and save it. Then when I bring it back, and say run. Now I've got my APA style back. Um, let's uh, look at uh, graphics themes. So you notice that there's a gray background here by default. If I click on theme, I can say, I don't want that theme gray. That's called theme gray. What's popular for journals is theme black and white. And you can see there are, I went too fast on that. There are a whole bunch of themes. If you were writing a journal article for the Economist magazine, you could choose this and it would, it would format that graph exactly how the Economist magazine wants, wants it done. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, how, it, how Excel does it, um, how Stephen Few's book does graphics, and so on, um, how the Wall Street Journal does their graphs. So you can choose any of those things. Let's apply that and do that graph again. And so the Wall Street Journal only does dashed uh, horizontal lines. They don't. Uh, they don't, they don't do uh, vertical, they never do vertical lines, I believe. And where it puts the legend is at the top rather than at the side. So it's doing all kinds of uh, changes for you. Okay. Um, so we've looked at a number of ways to compare groups. Uh, we've chosen sometimes uh, a graph or a type of analysis like a chi-square that was designed to make group comparisons. Another thing you can do is to choose a subset. So we can do that under uh, data sets, subset. And I can choose, I can say I want to save the results to a new data set, I'm gonna call that small. Oh wait, which, I don't know which data set I'm looking at. I'm on Titanic, okay. So I'm gonna call this small Titanic. Uh, or now even better, let's say Titanic females. For some reason I want just the females. And I can choose this. Oh, select the variables. Let's say I want all the variables. And I want, it even gives an example here. I want to say sex equals equals. Oh gosh, now how is it coded? Oh, male and female, okay. So within quotes, female. And if I run that, Now I've got Titanic females, they're all female. And now if I leave that checked, every analysis I do from now on will be done on just the females. So another way to do it is to use 
group by split. So here's group by, it's under, it's under data sets. And I'm gonna say split this. Well, I can't, <laughs> I almost made a mistake. I was gonna split by sex, but I can't split on sex because it's only the females. So I have to go back to the original and say, let's group by and set a split. And I'm gonna say split by sex. I'm gonna say run. Now watch, down here it says split is turned off. When I say run, now split is sex. So now I can say, let's go back and do this graph, but I'm gonna remove sex from it. I'm only asking for survival and no facets. Okay, so I'm gonna run that. And so first of all, it says these are the females. And then it does it again, here are the males. And it, it amazes me, this, is, this feature has been in SPSS and SAS since the beginning of time. <laughs> and yet this is a unique feature when it comes to our GUIs in, in Blue Sky. Uh, Jasper and Jamovi are very popular uh, point and click user interfaces for R and they, they can't do this fundamental thing. Now, what I do almost every time is I think, all right, so I've, I've got this interesting plot. Now I'm gonna go and do a t-test and compare males and females. Well, if I leave this turned on, that makes no sense because I'd be saying do a compare males and females only for the females. So uh, you have to remember to tell, go to group by and say, remove that split. And then here it says this removes the split, but you have to say run for it to really go away. Okay, uh, so let's pause there and take a five minute break. And I'll see you back here at oh, 11.06 roughly. And if you've got questions, hold them, hold them till then and we'll, we'll have plenty of time to go over those.
All right, are we ready to go? Let's see, Stephen, Davery, are you guys there? All right, a thumbs up. Ooh, that's, I haven't seen that before. <laughs> High tech. Okay, so let's talk about exporting output. So you can, oh, uh, actually, I think this is a little bit different from the slides I uh, sent you before. So I'll send out, I've tweaked a couple of the slides just this morning. So you can right click uh, a single table uh, in the output window and choose copy. Now, and, and by the way, let me let me do this and, and mention, I don't understand why it is, but I am very used to, uh, let's see, where's the table? Here we go. I am very used to selecting things and then doing control C to copy. And for some reason, if you right click and choose copy, that works and control C uh, doesn't. So let me, let me do this. Let me double check. I'm gonna do copy. I'm gonna go to Word. I'm gonna paste. Well, it did that time, but I swear sometimes it doesn't. But if you right click and, and choose copy, it always does. I've got to get to the bottom of, is it my, is it my imagination? Or, or not. Now that's interesting that it, it saved the boldness when I did that, whereas it didn't up here. But it's still a table either way. Hmm, interesting. Uh, so you can choose one table, you can choose a set of tables like that, or you can just click export output. And when you if you save it as a, um, well, you'd normally as a Blue Sky user, you'd want to save it as a BMD, the default, because that'll save everything you've done, all your dialogues, any markdown you put in here, everything is there. But if you save as markdown, then the dialogue uh, information is gone. Okay. Um, Yeah, oh, and by the way, uh, shading, when you copy and paste, shading uh, goes away, but Word has a whole bunch of shading styles that you, you just click on one of those and bing, it's back. Okay, so exporting a plot. This is a little bit unusual. And let's say I, I want to export this, I want to right click it. Now, if I say copy as an image, it's going to be like a photograph. So the resolution will be as my screen, which as I, I think my screen's a 96 DPI. So it's not going to be publication quality, but it'd be fine for a web website. But these downloads, this is kind of funny. Well, why do they say download instead of save as? And the reason for that is uh, what's planned is a server version of Blue Sky. And so when you run it on the server version, you literally will be downloading it. Um, but here, um, uh, if I say download as SVG, I'm going to go to my desktop and say uh, demo bar plot. And so there's an SVG. And notice it's showing me uh, how it looks because I have an SVG viewer installed, which is Inkscape. Do I say that in here? I don't, uh, I don't say that. So, oh, I didn't mean to open it. <laughs> I meant to click on it and I double clicked on it. So this is the Inkscape uh, editor. And so I could go in here and easily change the title. Uh, put arrows on here to annotate it in any way I want. But uh, but what I, all I wanted to do was to be able to bring up Word and let's say we'll put that right here. Just drag it in here. 
And so this is an, uh, a full resolution. It's not just a picture. Let me zoom it. And you see everything's crystal clear at any, any size. Whereas if I had said, well, you know, definitely if I came, whoops, here and said, copy image and go into Word and now paste it. And as I zoom, oops, you can see everything is really fuzzy because it's, it's stuck at uh, uh, either 72 or 96 DPI, which, whichever, I forget which one of those my screen is. Okay. Um, oh, another thing is if you download, let's bring that back. If I choose download as PNG, that's gonna be basically the same as copy image, but it'll put it in a file. So it will not be a 300 DPI PNG as I would want to publish with, but it'd be more uh, for your uh, web page or something. So what you can do at the moment, you could type in this code where you, you give in the command gg save, you tell it where you want it to go. And when it sees the extension PNG, it'll know to make it a portable network graphics format, PNG, which is a really good format for, if you're gonna have to use a, a photograph-like image of a plot, PNG is, is way better than JPEG because it's using a, a run length encoding com, uh, compression that is uh, lossless rather than a lossy JPEG. And uh, let's see, so here you specify units and in inches, the width, the height, how many dots per inch you want. And anytime you run this, it will save the last graph you created. Uh, so you have to run this right after you create your graph. And this will be hidden for, for done for you in a, a future dialog box that I'm surprised it's not there yet, but they, uh, Blue Sky, they're just adding to constantly. Everyone's asking from every direction to add things to it and they just keep doing it. And haven't gotten around to that. Okay, uh, so any questions about exporting things? All right. So let's talk Actually, about Marvel. I do have oh. a question now that I sure. think about it. Can you export a PDF from Blue Sky of the results? You know, I, it, I don't understand how it is. He, We've got Mark, it's in Markdown, and Markdown in our studio can go to anything because it's, it's using a software called Pandoc. But that, that piece, somehow that piece is missing here. So you can't export, like here, you should be able to export directly to Word or directly to PDF. And that's not there. And, uh, you know, I, I've asked about it, it just has not risen up to where. Not enough people have asked about it to where it's been added. So gotcha. yeah, good, good question. It should be. It should be a trivial thing for them to add. So, Thanks. Other, other uh, export questions? Okay. So let's talk about modeling. So the model fitting menu, that is where you decide what model to try. You can try a few. And then, uh, so let's say you're, you're using these model fitting methods and then to evaluate them or compare them, you use things on this menu. Or you can use model tuning and that's where Blue Sky does it for you. Well, let's get to that in a minute. And then the last one, model evaluation menu, regardless of where your model comes from, you can do all kinds of things with it on that menu. So for example, you could say under model evalu evaluation predict, and you can make a prediction on whatever data set you have brought to the front of the data grid, regardless of, of how that model was created. So there are 
just a, a, a crazy number of model fitting methods, lots and lots, and a lot of model tuning methods. And this is really kind of surprises a lot of people because they look at model tuning and there are only four things on the menu. So they think, well, it doesn't do very many kinds of models. Oh, not only does it do these, but you can actually, if you know something about the carrot package, uh, you, you could actually have it do like 200 different kinds of models. So let's start out doing a, doing a model, but before we do it, let's do a scatter plot. So let's say I want the penguin data and I'm interested in predicting, I'm gonna do model fitting, regression. I'm gonna do basic linear regression and I'm predicting body mass. Let's say that's a hard thing. You have to get a hold of the penguin uh, to get that but their uh, flipper length, you can estimate with binoculars or something. So you can put that in there. Oh, wait a second, I was doing, I was trying to do a plot, wasn't I? Hold on, let's go back to graphics. And we're gonna do a scatter plot. And I'm predicting body mass from flipper length. And do I, let's see, what did I do here? Oh, I faceted by species. So let's do facets. I want rows by species. And run. <laughs> oh, that Wall Street Journal style looks really weird to me. <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's add. I want a linear model fit. I could choose a whole bunch of different robust linear models and you name it on here. All right, so I'm gonna say run. So it's gone and fit lines there. It looks like the slopes are, you know, more or less the same, uh, but, but uh, certainly the y-intercepts are, are very different. All right, so let's do, go and create a regression model based on that. All right, so we're gonna do model fitting, regression. We'll start with basic. And if I wanna predict body mass from flipper length and sex, that's all I can do in this simple version. So it's gonna do an additive model. I can say run that and it, it just, takes flipper length and sex and can't consider the interaction between them. So this is very simple. But if I go to regression, uh, linear advanced, that's where I gain a lot of control. So I'm gonna do the same kind of thing, predict body mass. And so now I'm gonna use, uh, flipper length and sex. And the plus uh, operator is highlighted here. So if I say move it over, it, it puts it in additive. And if I want to add all possible two-way interactions to that, I just choose that and move with them again. And it's added on the interaction. Another way to do the same thing, if you happen to know the way R works, is I could choose those two and choose the asterisk. And that in R is the same thing. It's each thing by itself and the interaction. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to, I just love how this thing works. And select the two ways. Move that over. All right, so then I'm going to click run. And the first thing, can I shrink this? There we go. The first thing it does is it displays the model in abstract form. And so you could actually cut and paste this into Word 
And if you're writing a journal article uh, about this, you could have the, the fancy statistical form of it. Then it fits the model and then fills in the parameters. And then after that, it gives you a linear model summary with the p-value for the whole model, residuals, coefficients. So we're, we're not going to go over all the details of how to do, how to interpret linear regression here. We're just focusing on how to run blue sky. And here are the coefficients and the ANOVA table and a sumsa square table. So that same model builder is in all of the things that are labeled advanced, like logistic advanced. Uh, also, back under the analysis menu, in means if we were doing uh, N-way ANOVA, then the same, the same model builder or formula builder uh, is used. Okay, so questions about, oh, so let, let, let's take a look here. I think we've got plenty of time. That, let's say, let's do a different kind of thing where we're doing model uh, tuning. So I'm gonna do K-fold cross-validation because it's easy to explain. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, this is my um, oh, demo tree, demo tree model. And I want to divide my data set into five pieces that are called folds. And I'm gonna fit a tree model to four of them and then predict on the fifth piece. And I'm gonna do that for all five pieces. That's what K-fold cross-validation is. And then in the end, I'm gonna save whichever of these models was the best. So I'm going to uh, predict species from uh, maybe body mass and flipper length. Don't want to get it too good because you can do 100% here. And, oh, let's not do species, let's do sex. So it says when the variable predict has two levels, specify the levels of interest and, and, and it has, it has already uh, specified them. Uh, <clears throat> you used to have to type them in, I think, and now it, they ju it just figures it out. So I could choose among a whole bunch of things like decision trees. Uh, I've got uh, K nearest neighbors, various stepwise regressions, logistic GLM net, you name it. They're, all these models are buried uh, here in this lower menu, which is why people, uh, I've, very often I've had people say, um, you know, well, I want to do cross capable of cross-validation and why doesn't Blue Sky offer more models there? <laughs> like, wow, you just have not looked at the dialog box very carefully because uh, there are every, just about every imaginable, all the popular models are here. So I'm going to use a decision tree and my, my favorite is a conditional inference tree called a C tree. And so this is a tree that does a little statistical test before it does a split. So you end up with a pretty good tree and it's also interpretable. So I'm going to then say run, have I checked it all? And it's thinking about it because I've asked it to do actually quite a bit of work. And it comes up and says it used an R package called party and the function was C tree. And uh, <clears throat> here's how it did the females. It predicted um, 154 of them correctly, and 40 were predicted as males. So there's a call the confusion matrix. Overall accuracy is uh, about 85%. Uh, kappa is, is accuracy uh, corrected for chance, which is more like 70%, uh, 69%, whatever. And um, then we've got sensitivity, specificity, uh, and, and so on. And it came, comes back and it says, while it was doing the model search, it, uh, it tried a min criterion. What it, you don't have to know what min criterion is. Just know that whatever it tried, it's a, it's a parameter uh, called a hyperparameter 
that can only be optimized by trying variations. And so it's tried variations. And when it tried a min criterion of 0.01, it got this level of accuracy. When it did 0.5, accuracy uh, went up slightly. And when it did 0.99, it, it dropped. And so it says here, the best model was discovered using min criterion of 0.5. And that is the model that has been saved. And so now I could go under a model evaluation and, and study it in, in various ways. Okay, so how do you uh, annotate your output? <clears throat> so there is a, a simplified language called Markdown. <clears throat> and this is an example of it. A single hashtag at the, or hash symbol at the front of something says make it a, a headline. <clears throat> if you do two, make it says make it a smaller headline. And if you put numbers in there, it'll create a numbered list. If you use stars, it'll create a bulleted list. So I'm going to select this and copy it. And then I'm going to go into my output file. And I'm going to say I want to add something. Now notice there's a difference. This plus says, add another piece of output. This plus here says, add another chunk of our code or some markdown code, wherever you happen to be. So let's add it to output two here. So I'm gonna paste it, or I could type it either way. And if I say run, there's my markdown. So I can, so then I could go and of course still say, let's go and do get some, um, oh, I'm not in analysis. <laughs> Summary, uh, descriptives on say these variables and tell it to run. And so my markdown is just integrated right in to the, to the whole thing. And I could go back and put in some more markdown to say, you know, in the next section, I'm going to do such and such, or I can just type the same stuff, tell it to run. So you can alternate back and forth very easily between our output and the explanation about what you, uh, what you're doing here. So you could, you could write your whole journal article here if you wanted to. Okay. Um, so that's about all, uh, and, and, and again, to get it saved and sent off to somewhere else like our studio, you would want to make sure rather than blue sky format, you'd want to just use plain old R markdown. Okay, so you don't really need to know how to work with R code at all to use blue sky. Many blue sky users just really dislike R code and never use it. But there are only a couple of simple things to have to know for the fundamentals. So let's take a look. So uh, something I've shown was so far was I could show the R code this way. But another thing I haven't done is bring back the dialog. And don't, if I click this, it'll run. But what if I don't want to run? What if I want to instead paste the R code in and change it? I can click this and that's what it did. It created a new R chunk, R code chunk. It typed it all in. And then I can say, oh, I didn't want that standard error. I'll just delete it. And then, then it says, uh-oh, you made a change not reflected in the dialogue. So the dialogue has just been removed because it has no idea what you've done. I mean, it would be asking an impossible task to say you could type in any random R code here. And so it just has to break away. The dialogue is deleted. And so if I click run, then boom, the dialogue's gone. But the output's still there. And it's just removed the thing I didn't want. Um, yeah, okay, I had to explain that. Um, 
code, let's see, our code from the dialog not run. Oh, so you could change existing R code or you could do what I just did, bring in the R code that has not been yet executed. Either way, it's gonna give you the same warning. Okay, um, so the R editor is uh, just hidden down here and you can pop it open. And uh, strangely enough, there's no maximize. The, 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 at the moment, there, there will be, they just, I think they just forgot to put that on. And so you can stretch it up and notice it does not allow you to cover the data. And that's done on purpose because um, initially it was allowed and people would cover it up and then they would freak out and lose. It's like, my data has gone, what happened to it? So, um, and so how this thing works, you notice it's doing color coding and it is smart if I put the cursor at the beginning of a big long bunch of code and it will understand that that code does not end until the last close parenthesis. So when I click run, it, it jumps all the way down to the bottom there and, and runs everything. So it's, it's not as good an R code editor as um, R Studio. But let's say if I say I want the mean of something, if I were in R Studio, it would be offering right now to you know what are the options that could be, what are the arguments that could be plugged in here? It's not doing that, but it did color code it and it typed in the open and close parenthesis. So, um, you know, it's, it's an okay editor for given, given the fact that they're not expecting people to be doing a huge amount of R code editing in here. And by the way, uh, it only, you can only open a single editor window. Oh, and I should point out what's very important about opening two different windows is let's say you're in a graduate program, very common situation to where the student who just graduated before you in your program did a huge amount of work in, in Blue Sky. And now you want to do variations on that theme on a new data set. You can open that person's work here. You could in one window. And where's some, where's a dialogue? <laughs> you could bring up a dialogue, say it's a complex model. You could say, ah, I want to open that dialogue. And then, oops, I'm not wide enough. And then, oh, shucks, I've changed the size of things. Hold on, sorry. All right, bring up the dialogue. There's the dialogue from this output. Then I can go to my new output if the variable names are the same and say run. And I have just copied the code from one to another while allowing for changes in between. So a really important part about it not doesn't just have re reproducibility, it has reusability in GUI form, which is, I think, a pretty unique thing. <clears throat> I'm not sure if any of the other uh, R GUIs have that. Okay, um, so there are only blue, two blue sky functions that you need to know about <clears throat> if you're an R user. Let's say you create a data set called My Data, and you want to put it into the data grid. The function is blue sky load refresh. And you put within quotes the, the name of that data set. And it'll go in the data grid. What if you use R code to create a model or some other kind of object? Then and you want to display it in the output window. That's what bSky format does. And bSky format handles all of these types of objects and is phenomenally powerful. You, you could, when you're, say, you're printing your ANOVA result, 
you can use bSky format by default, use no arguments, and it'll print just like you're used to seeing blue sky print. But if you want to dig into the guts of bSky format, you can control which tables appear in your output, the order of those tables in your output, which columns each table has, if you want. And you can even delete uh, label uh, columns or change the order of the columns in each table. So just amazing amount of power. To, you can customize your output to look just about anything you want. Uh, and uh, it's unfortunately, the help file is not there to explain to you how to do all that. So that's being worked on. OK, so uh, in summary, currently, uh, Blue Skies, it's very easy. It's very powerful. Uh, it has almost complete GUI reproducibility. And when I say almost, the main thing that's missing is when you open up that first data set, there's the R code that shows how it's opened. I want that to be a dialog box. There should be no reason why it's not. So it's very close to complete reproducibility using the GUI, but not quite. You still have to manually go and change the file name in R code, which I don't like. <laughs> it teaches you R terminology. It teaches the very popular tidyverse R code. Um, <clears throat> and uh, only Blue Sky and R Commander. Oh, I take that back. J and Jasp. Jasp is added. Uh, I'm going to say R models here just to cheat. OK, so only Blue Sky and R Commander can save, open, and predict using R model objects. Jasp can create something it made up called Jasp models. Uh, but you can't send a Jasp model off to an R user and have them you know, get anything out of it. It's, they're, they're a strange package. So in the future, what can you expect? Uh, the Blue Sky package is not in CRAN at the moment. Uh, it's only on GitHub. Uh, the table of contents feature should be very easy to add because all of the headlines are done in Markdown behind the scenes. And Markdown uh, makes it easy to create a table of contents. Uh, it should complete that GUI reproducibility. Um, uh, they're working to simplify gen uh, the generated R code that it uses. Sometimes, a lot of times the R code is crystal clear, standard R code. And sometimes it, it's dumping out uh, a little bit too much information that should be hidden. Um, automated update notifications, Josh's uh, favorite uh, <laughs> feature here. That, that is only partially there when uh, something that's in the core of Blue Sky changes, you'll get a notification. But what I want to see is anytime even a dialog box that is in their marketplace to download changes, if I'm using it, I want to get a notification of that. I want an offer to say, this is updated. You want it? And I can just say, yeah, and get it. And then if for some reason I don't like the new version, I want to be able to say, go back, go, go use my old version. So that's, that's all in the works. Uh, more advanced mixed uh, effects linear models. This is a, a very difficult topic because uh, R itself doesn't have all of the issues addressed yet. Uh, but as soon as R addresses those issues, then uh, they'll be uh, added into blue sky. Structural equation modeling, I think that's just about done and to be added. Mediator, moderator, um, through the uh, process R uh, package uh, is, is planned. Uh, the Mayo Clinic is planning on adding propensity scores and, and uh, matching. And at the moment, uh, the machine learning and artificial intelligence is done with the carrot package. Uh, we hope to move that to tidy models. Uh, as soon as tidy models a little bit more ready for prime time and, uh, and the ability to, to type in Python code in the middle of your analysis or SQL. Um, either either in code or in uh, your dialogues. So there's a lot more information. The, pretty much every feature that is in Blue Sky is documented in the Blue Sky user guide, which I wrote. And you can uh, read it for free by clicking that link there.
Okay, so if you would take a moment to click on workshop.utk.edu on your browser, you should see uh, an option to fill out a little tiny survey to give us some feedback, which uh, uh, helps us uh, justify our existence uh, whenever budget time rolls around. And uh, besides that, I've got uh, plenty of time to hang around and uh, you know demonstrate anything else you'd like to see in Blue Sky. Any uh, questions? Uh, no questions, but I did want to say thanks. This was super interesting. It was just kind of like uh, you know drinking from the fire hose. So I need to uh, need to process, but but everything sounds super interesting. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's a lot to absorb for sure. Uh, and I, you know, and I wavered back and forth on this because I think what I told told Josh when I was playing this was I would have a one hour thing that would not mention R at all. And then, then I saw that uh, I don't know that the I don't think of the re a recorded version ever got put online. And I thought, oh my gosh, if it's going to be a recorded version, I've got to talk about R and how it fits in here. And I, you know, so I tried to keep it to an absolute minimum. <clears throat> but well, I'm uh, glad you did because the the connection to R was one of the things I was most interested in. So oh, okay, I, good, good. Glad I covered that then. Yeah, if you were wanting to teach something where in the beginning the students could get comfortable get used to the class learning you know introductory statistics and then as the semester goes on say well by the way this is really being done by a language and now you can start learning that language so you know especially if you had a follow-up course you could be using the same tool but now tell people now now you have to go and the assignments have to be turned in in a markdown file where clearly you have written some of your own code it, yeah, I, we're, I'm, I work with the institutional research for the system, but it, same thing just for the rest of the people in my office who are not as comfortable with R. I was like, oh, this would be great. I could just hand this to me and they go, yeah, you can do some simple stuff if you need to. And then either the, the ones of us who are more comfortable with R or maybe they, they could start to get comfortable with R on their own. And yeah, this could kind of help be the, the training wheels almost. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you had, as institutional research, if you had some kind of special file format that, that people could get a hold of, uh, you know, you could build into Blue Sky the ability to go and pop that open uh, so that, uh, you know, people could, could be reading whatever your file format is, reading, reading it directly if it doesn't already have that ability. Okay, yeah, well, like I said, thanks again. This is super informative. Sure, sure. Happy to help. Any other questions? All righty, well, we're all done. Uh, I'm willing to hang around here if, <laughs> as, long as, as long as anyone has anything they want to see. Uh, but other than that, we're, we're finished and thanks for attending. Hey, Bob, you want to stop the recording for a second? Oh, yeah, thanks. Um, let's see. Uh, stop video? Oh, no. Um, bum, 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 bum. Should be down at the bottom, I think, of the, um, maybe of the presentation screen. Sharing screen, stop share. Let me do the drop. Oh, here we go. Stop recording. Are you sure you want to stop calling?